It is currently eight o'clock on a Friday night. Tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock, I've entered a 24 scale crawler competition. And funnily enough, <laughs> I'm not ready. So the last one, round one, I took my FCX 24. It's got the Max Smasher body on it, but it's the power wagon. So it's got lock diffs, um, modded some brass on the front. And I'd done okay for my first competition. There was 24 people there and I came 18th. So for round two, I'm gonna be using my SCX 24. We'll talk about that in a second. And my goal is to improve. So I only need to come 17th or higher or lower, whatever way you look at it. And I have succeeded. So you may notice this isn't any old SCX 24. This is my completely upgraded Trill One, Reef Servo, Furitech Komodo with a Lizard ESC. Just about to say I've upgraded the wheels and I noticed that one of the screws is coming out. Get you back in there. So on the first competition, I was running these trail wheels with some RC four wheel drive mud slingers. We changed them over, trail wheels again, Team TRC green uh, wheels, some Mickey Thompson Barger Pro X tires, and these feel really nice and sticky. Some of you with a keener eye will see that it's got a carbon fiber chassis. This is an LCG chassis from Endura. Extended the links out, so it's now the long wheelbase SCX24 rather than the standard deadbolt. If I put the deadbolt body on, you'll see that. So the extended the wheelbase again with trill high clearance links, all singing and dancing. And the thing I've been working on most, I mean, the chassis change was pretty basic, sort of swapping over from the original one. What's taking me the longest is to sort in the body out. Now the Max Smasher body, or as it's called now, the Smasher, we've lost Max. Oh, another screw loose, look. Man, this isn't looking good for my competition tomorrow. <laughs> It's gonna fall apart before I even do anything. I need to go over this and check them all, don't I? I need to check all my hardware. Anyway, so the Max Smasher body is actually perfect for that longer wheelbase. It is quite a heavy body. Well, it's not heavy, but for something this small it is. And I've used that before. I wanted something new. When I was there last time, I got given these bodies from Iceberg RC. That one is a, is it a GMC Eagle or something, not something I'm familiar with. That one's a Jeep Cherokee. And I also got a Suburban, which is here. And I've cut it out and painted it. I've purposely cut it down because I wanted some extra clearance. Not very classic look for a Suburban, but it is Team TRC colors with a nice bright green and the gray. You can get 3D printed grills for them. You can get magnetic body mount kits for them. They come with window masks and tinted window stickers to go over the top. Stickers that you cut out to put on there. Really, really nice. Quite fiddly to do, but, but I think it turned out pretty good. I can't put it on there at the moment because one of my magnets come off, so I've just added some glue, but you will see it on in this video. The issue I had with this, because it's so long and it overhangs the front quite a lot, when I put it around my little mini crawler course, although it looks good and on most of the stuff it's good, this front end just catches and I don't think it's gonna be good for a competition. But I had to think of another body and you know what's coming because I've probably put it in the thumbnail. <laughs> I was gonna call it Shark Max, but I don't know, I don't wanna get sued. This is off the kids' Monster Jam toy. I've taken the framework out from underneath. I've cut a few bits and pieces out. I've put some magnets on. I've painted it gray, because it was blue. Put a bit of green around the window, some green gills, green eyebrows, a few stickers on it. And I must say, it looks awesome. And it just clips on, just like that, with magnets. Come on, you gotta admit it, it looks pretty good. And if you don't think it looks good, you gotta admit, it's different, it's at least different. But what this does is it gives me such a good approach angle. I can actually, I'm gonna move that bumper back a little bit because it's, it's out all the way. So I'm gonna push that bumper back and this is gonna have a really good approach angle. The good thing about having this mini crawler course is I can just give things a bit of a shake down. Now there's a chance tomorrow that I may, <laughs> may get disqualified. 
I've not read the rules properly, but I think, I think I should be all right. Apparently from the top, as long as you can't see any electronics, should be good. Crawler shark, do, 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 do. Crawler shark, do, 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 do. do. <laughs> I almost forgot to mention, I built this to take with me. I've not finished it yet, but I'm gonna take it anyway. It's a little uh, climb test. You can't really accurately look at the angles on there because of the curvature of it, but, but it's pretty difficult and it's pretty steep. So making a few adjustments to your crawler, you can see how much further you can get up here. This goes quite far. That's about its limit. I don't want to go any further, I don't want it to fall, but pretty good. <laughs> this competition's run by GCRC and LCG Crawler in the UK. The first couple of rounds were kind of a bit of a test to see how popular it would be, um, like a winter series of 24 scale crawling. And it's turned out to be really popular. So I think they're gonna continue it um, next year or the end of this year going into next year. Really, really good uh, day out. There's basically two courses. There's a pink course and a green course. Each course has got 10 gates and you get 10 minutes on each course to complete it. There's various rules and stuff. One of the main things that you'll see on here is there's unlimited reverses. So you don't get penalized for reversing. Uh, because this course is so tight, uh, they allow unlimited reversing. So you join me on gate four um, of the green course with Crawler Shark. I think I hit the first gate, I wasn't really concentrating, so <laughs> I switched on and I cracked on. By this point, it was only that first gate that I'd hit, so I've got a nice clean run at the moment. This is my favourite board, this one. The tyres grip up really well. It's quite steep. You can't really see it too much on this video, but it's quite a hard um, climb this. So up through gate six, up through gate seven, pass them both cleanly. And then really trying to concentrate to get around here so it doesn't fall off. The long wheelbase and that low down weight on this is really, really helping it. Another clean pass through gate eight, and then down that really steep slope. I edited it out because it took me ages to get down there. Then the easiest way for me was just to reverse back through this hole. No gate near this time, is there? No. no. That's what caught me out last time. Right, where are we going? Through there. This is where I lost some more points. The back wheel got hooked up in there, I had to do a reposition. It was either reposition or snap something on my axle. That Furitec Komodo in there is a beast. So we took the reposition there. Gate and then end. And I got a zero score. Nothing. Nothing. Zero. Oh, look at the time as well. It's got to put me. Is that I Oh, no. That's, that's got to put me first, doesn't it? That's, I think that's put yeah, me first. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, put me first then. <laughs> I'll reshuffle it when we've got a few no, scores. I'm first. <laughs> no, I'm first. <laughs> Before we look at my second run, look at this thing, it's absolutely awesome. This thing was built by Reactive Terrain. They've got a YouTube channel and there's actually a video on how they made it. Absolutely awesome. It's in a suitcase, you've got little gates in there and what makes it better is in the side of the suitcase you've got storage for your rig, charger, batteries and stuff like that. I'll leave links to their channel in the description and go check it out. Right, second run. Mr. Baker behind me trying to put me off. Second run, let's go. Gate one was clean, gate two, this was really hard, this one, really slippery. Got a little bit distracted, celebrating, I got up there and fell off. I got to reposition here, which made this a little bit better for me, so I could just go straight through the gate. Another one of my favorites, this board, I like the look of this one. Really, really tight getting through this gate. Nearly fell off, but just about got it. Then Mickey Thompson tires, I'm so impressed with the grip they've got on them. Next gate clear, under the tunnel. Now on this bit, I spent ages trying to get up to that gate and I couldn't, so it rolled and then I made sure it fell off the table, which gave me a reposition rather than a rollover. Maybe a little bit cheating, but, <laughs> or tactical. And that allowed me to clear that gate, cleared for on the next gate. This one wasn't too bad either. Clear through there. Again, nice grip on the tires, cleared through that gate. Gate eight, I think that was. Progress, nicely done. Messed up here. Look at the size of that gap on that bridge. Look, just fell into it. Decided to reposition there. 
I was getting close on time now. I think I had about like 50 seconds left. So we got around here, quick rush around the back. And then on this last gate, I decided I had like, I didn't have much time left. I'd already hit it. So we just went straight through gate 10. But still with a score of only 20, that put me in the finals. Look who made the final. Yes, I got into the finals. So what happened in the final was the five um, finalists got to choose a board each and then put two gates on each board. Just my rear wheel tapped it, unfortunately. Cleared that gate. So yeah, we all so we all chose boards. We all added the gates in ourselves. My my board was board four because I was fourth. So this is the second board, which was relatively easy. But then I made a big mistake. I went the risky route of going down a steep, going down this really steep bit when I should have gone around the outside. Going around the outside of it was really really narrow, and I didn't think I'd do it. Whereas I should have because I've done it later on in the day one-handed. So anyway, we took this route, hit the gate, cost me some points. Next gate was clear. Uh, the following gate cleared through it and then reversed all the way back because we're now going onto my board and I knew that I put this first gate at quite a dodgy angle so I had to get a nice move on that. Then I was too distracted looking at my inside tyre yeah, and turned with my outside tyre oh. and just tapped the gate yeah. there. Again, yeah. silly points lost. The poor shark couldn't yeah, fit under there, so I had to go around. Right the top here. And 10 points for reposition. Oh. It's nothing for oh. dragging out of it. Oh. Push the rock over. Yeah. Yay! Power. Can I just yeah. push my body back on? hooked up on this bit again I just couldn't get up there so I had to reposition through the gate and then through the last gate third place with 45 points and Mr Phil Harrison <laughs> I can't believe that Crawler Shark came third. Well, Crawler Shark and me. There was no silverware for third, only first and second got a nice little trophy, but I don't know what the future holds for Crawler Shark. There's not much more I can do to it, really. It's got pretty much all the high-end upgrades. I think I need some longer shocks, a little bit more travel, but other than that, nothing wrong with it. We didn't only get third place, we beat most of the team drivers as well.